Hi. Um, it's, good, it's great to be speaking here. Um, I will be speaking about the impact of mobile and social games on gambling. Um, I'm Angelo Dalli. I'm the CEO of Bit8. Uh, Bit8 is a gaming platform company that creates uh, platforms for casinos that run poker, sports book, um, different casinos around the world. We've got 10% of the top 50 casinos in the world using our software to power their casinos, uh, always on real money gambling. Um, I'm going to just start off by uh, showing some monetization uh, factors on mobile games. Uh, effectively, mobile games uh, monetize four times more effectively than other mobile application types. And as you can see, um, uh, there are lit different usage statistics about mobile and tablet usage. And uh, you can see that games make up of around 43% of the different use of different applications. So, casual and, so and social gambling. I mean, what is the difference between casual and social gaming and gambling? Uh, gambling uh, is basically where the outcome is pr determined primarily by luck. So casual games are the games that are not traditional casino games like roulette or poker. Um, so you've got bingo, keno, lotto, number games, and scratch cards. While casual gaming, the outcome is determined primarily by skill. So you've got skill games with prizes, you've got fantasy leagues, you've got video games. And social gaming sort of falls in between. So you've got casual gaming or gambling with a social network integration. So moving from social gaming to social gambling. Effectively, we've got social games which are completely unregulated. They have no relation to gambling teams. They have minimal use of virtual money something like Farmville or Diamond Dash. You can play with virtual money, which is so far unregulated. So you've got fantasy leagues and skill games with prizes. And then you go into the regulated markets, where you actually need a license, where you have to operate in a regulated environment. So you have a few examples in the UK and Gibraltar on Facebook. Um, so what are the key features in casual gaming? Um, skill determines the outcome. You need to be easy to learn, hard to master. You should play the game in a series of small time slices, and it should also be easy to acquire. So social and mobile gaming crosses the boundaries of social and gambling. Some trends. 30% um, of uh, mobile users in the EU occasionally use uh, games on their mobile. 7% play mobile games daily, while 8% prefer to, to play free games. The top three game genres, if you look at the statistics, are in fact casino, strategy, and card games. So two out of the top three are in fact related to issues that can be um, monetized in a real money play. And the average mobile share of the total online gambling business is around 7%. And if you look at the industry trends, in fact, you see that social and casual games the little red and green line over here is actually going up. There is more investment in it, there is more revenue being generated, so it is on its way up. If you look at the investment done also in the games investment after IPOs, you'll also see that the investment volume, the amount of money that's been put in, um, this is as recent as quarter three projected of this year, um, is also going up steadily. So around 853 million were invested in social game development last year, and more than 50% of this has been invested in real money gambling. And uh, the social gambling market is estimated to be around 2 billion by the end of 2013. Um, most VC firms have exited, unfortunately, um, the market after Zynga's IPO, which did not really do as well as expected. Um, but there is still a lot of money being invested. I mean, more than 400 million just last year. So what are the gambling industry trends? Uh, Bitaid operate mostly in the gambling industry rather than social gaming. Um, and we are seeing a lot of trends where online gambling operators are investing heavily in social gaming. So you've got investor types like media companies. Uh, you also have 
skilled gaming operators, online gambling operators, there's online retail and e-commerce who are also getting into the game, and venture capital and private equity. So the traditional media companies, um, these are some who have actually invested in social games, um, are trying to utilize and capitalize on their content and on the existing programs that they have, the existing program features that they have, and so on and so forth. Um, online retail and e-commerce companies like Google, um, Apple, and Amazon are trying to tie in their hardware offerings together with games. I mean, recently Amazon set up their game studios and are trying to put games also on their Kindle. Uh, but it, I think Google and Apple have the by far the most comprehensive hardware ecosystem. So what makes mobile and social attractive? It's immediate. You can play a quick game very easily anywhere on a mobile device. You attract newer and younger customers and also increase the brand awareness and attract new customers. Also, there is this hope that you can convert social network free play gamers to real money play. So you can use social games as a acquisition channel. Social casinos are also perceived to be more suitable for younger customers. Um, uh, so around 60% of casual gamblers are also women, except for fantasy sports. And this is very significant because uh, more traditional online casinos attract men rather than women. So you've got a different demographic of players and social games than you get in normal um, uh, traditional casinos. And also, it's seen as a market entry point into unregulated or non-liberalized markets. So you can do a casual game in the States, but you cannot do real money online gaming in a lot of the cases, basically. Um, so which gambling games are suited for social networks? So you've got games that are less social to those that are more social. So you can start off from games like scratch cards, which you play on your own. There is very little room for interaction in social networks. Then you move up to slots, which again are more um, games that you play on your own, lotto card games. Then you start becoming more social. In sports book, you can chat with your friends. You can say, OK, I'm going to play against this particular match. Um, you make side bets against each other, exchange betting. Um, bingo, which is very renowned as being very social because you have chat functions, you have to have that social element in bingo. And also poker, in which you have to play with other people, so it is the mo most social of all the different games. Um, so if you look at the different relevant game types, we are studying the different game types and how suitable they are for social uh, network adoption. And basically, it is very clear that um, slot games have the highest potential of being adapted to social um, game types. Poker, which has been the most popular, uh, is around 13%. And the rest of the games, um, uh, for example, bingo and also um, skill games, can be very interesting new entrants into the market. We also looked at different Eastern European, since we're speaking in Kiev, um, success stories. There are a lot of different uh, mobile and social games manufacturers that are success stories from Eastern Europe, and we feel that there is a lot of mobile, there is a lot of demand for content, especially on mobile games, um, uh, which is not really fulfilled. If you look at the selection, for example, on our platform, we've got around 4,000 different real money casino games but less than 300 different mobile games. So there is a large disparity in the availability of mobile uh, games, HTML5 games, that are designed also with casino in mind um, as regards to real money games. So if you're a social game manufacturer, what marketing channels can you use to target the gamers? Uh, basically, 37% would be more the popular sites to put adverts there on popular sites. Also, email, surprisingly, is quite good as a marketing channel to target gamers. And also, um, adverts on gambling sites, but that will not get you new customers, but it will rather get you um, those who are maybe on the softer side of the market. And event sponsorship. TV adverts sometimes can also work quite well, um, especially if you're a new entry market and uh, no one knows about the brand. 
some examples of real money gambling on Facebook. Um, there aren't that many um, who are actually doing real money gambling on Facebook. Um, yesterday I was speaking at the Mobile Power Summit in England and I was talking to the 888 guys, in fact, um, about this on Facebook. And they had mixed feelings that early on it didn't perform as well as they thought it would be, but it actually, um, after time, it did actually perform well. Um, so some of the operators, for example, Gamesys and Jackpot Joy, you've got the app Bingo Frenzy, that was one of the first that was launched in 2012 with a Gibraltar and DK license, um, 888, Zynga and Demon Party, um, and Paddy Power. Um, so those are the main examples of real money gambling that you have on Facebook. And what is the acceptance of gambling on social networks? Uh, basically, on Facebook, if you have a look, uh, advertising is allowed with minimum spend. You've got limited areas also where you can do real money. Um, generally, you have to have a special agreement with Facebook and have a license in the areas where you are actually operating. On Google, you have promotions allowed for some regulated markets, um, but in general, it is a bit less liberal than Facebook. Um, and LinkedIn, there is no Twitter and YouTube, they do not really cater for this, so it is kind of a free for all. Um, if contact and Adna Klasniki, also it is a little bit uh, unclear there. And MySpace, for instance, and High Five actually forbid it outright. Um, if you look at the analysis of, we looked at around 210 casino apps on Facebook, um, you get just one of those apps that has more than 10 million players. Then you get around two that have around 5 million players, um, 12 with 1 million players, and the rest have half a million players and above. A lot of those apps, around 63 from 210, have 10,000 or less um, players. So there is a distribution where the winner uh, takes all. So what are the main factors affecting the industry? Um, social gaming innovations and disruptions. Um, you need to have HTML5 support. There is also a restrictive market legislation. You've got mergers and acquisitions, a lot of mergers, a lot of acquisitions. Once established on, uh, online gaming operators find that you are um, being successful, they normally acquire that site. You also have state lotteries and monopolies. For example, in New Jersey, in the States, where they are opening up the market there to real money gaming. Um, you've got new games and game types and portfolio asset mining. And also, there are some issues like cross-platform compatibility and technological issues. App stores also impose a lot of restrictions. So uh, that is something that is um, an issue which has limited the growth of the industry there. What do we think are the future trends? Um, uh, we did a survey with this company called MECN, uh, where 81% of professionals believe that gambling operators will buy successful gambling site. 47% uh, believe that acquisitions will acquire to broaden the portfolio. So it has big implication for Eastern European based game developers. And around 64% state that there will be more investment in casual and social games. The liberalization of markets will also drive new business. If the US opens up, it's going to drive a lot of new business. Um, uh, the market can literally almost double. Um, social games can also be used to gain market share, where traditional gambling games are prohibited. So a lot of operators are actually doing that, using it to prepare the ground, as to speak. And there is also skill games with prizes, which is an, a new area where you have normal non-traditional casino games that give you prizes. Again, mobile and tablet and desktop, it is quite important to have games that will change their appearance and be compatible both on mobiles, both on tablets and also on desktop, so you'll be able to have different progressions and reach different channels. It depends also on the type of game. For example, uh, people who like small, different casual games, like connect type games, um, normally play it on a mobile. If you look at sports book, people do play it on mobile and tablet at the same time, because you get the tablet that has a larger screen. If you're looking at something that needs videos, for example, with live, with live events, tablets would be a more appropriate channel together with desktop. Our solution um, uh, that we normally do 
is to put advanced bonuses um, together with tournaments and promotions and some artificial intelligence in order to make the game more personalized and more attractive to players. And you do have models of how players behave. Um, I was listening in the previous presentation. You do get psychologists involved and you do get um, player prediction and behavioral modeling to try to make the game more attractive to existing players. So what are the short-term trends for gambling apps? Um, uh, there is also exciting development in near-field communication in which you'd be able to play a game with someone who is next to using NFC. The age verification, because it is very important in gambling to verify the age of the players. And also less dependency on the Facebook social graph. And as you can see there, Google have been experimenting also in Japan, where they actually have a kiosk that will sell you a game that you can actually play on a real life kiosk. So who are the major market winners in the gambling and social mobile space? We predict that they're going to be the large online gambling operators. Size does matter. If you've got a lot of uh, players on your network, it is going to attract even more players. Um, standalone social gaming sites like King.com, media and entertainment portals with B2B deals, and social gaming operators like Zynga. And there is the importance of having the right B2B partnerships, technology, and game content. Without those three, um, you're not going to be successful. But if you have those three that are done in a right way, there is much more room for success. Regulated markets also, if you're going to operate in a regulated market, it requires much more effort because you need to comply with the rules of different countries and there are also more expenses. So in gambling, the real value of social networks still needs to be proven. Um, uh, the tendency is that non-real money play, they tend to move to real money play and to achieve long-term profitability. And as we've seen even with Zynga, they did go into real money play um, in order to achieve more profit. Um, uh, there is a lot of players that do not convert to real money play, who continue to play for free. So uh, the real value of social networks I from a gambling industry perspective is still to be proven. Um, and social networks also seem to artificially keep the supply low, possibly due to US regulatory restrictions. So that may change if the US becomes more friendly towards gambling, online gambling, it may actually change. Um, so the recipe for success, um, the highest impact factors that lead to a successful implementation um, is to have a friendly user interface, especially one that takes advantage of touch interface and gestures, ideally HTML5. Um, to have a fast and responsive app, um, so the round, each round doesn't need to take more than 15 seconds. After 15 seconds, players do tend to abandon the game. Also to have a solid and reliable backend platform, so you have larger number of concurrent players in social games, and also have effective handling of low-grade and dropped connections. You also need to have a minimum critical mass of players to be achieved. Otherwise, um, people are not going to be attracted to the network. Um, so operators do need to amass size. You need to be driven by first mover advantages and also acquisitions. In certain games like uh, casual gaming where you have cash liquidity, that you need a pool of cash, you need a pool of players, like in poker. I mean, no one wants to play poker on a side that has a few players. You want to play poker on a side that has many players already playing, even in bingo. Um, you also have this problem that you need to have a pool of cash and a pool of players available in the first place. So new operators may find it quite hard because you need to provide that pool of cash and somehow find that players in the first place. Um, also, some tie-ins with real-world events have proven to be quite successful in which you migrate players from bricks and mortars, offline places, to online, and also advertising on large portals and sites, and basically trying to convince internet users who are not yet online gamers, um, rather than offline casual gamers, to use these sites. Um, so with that, I think I'll, uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, uh, and uh, I'm hoping that there'll be some questions to make this into a more discussion type. Thank you.
Okay, my question is about the, the latest rise of the cryptocurrency like Bitcoins and Litecoins. The question is, is it fit anywhere in a, in a gambling? And if yes, is there any perspectives? And if, if we will see in the future like casinos that can accept the Bitcoins and they can play anonymously? Uh, th there are in fact some casinos that do accept Bitcoins, um, uh, but it is something that is very, very new. Um, uh, so Bitcoins specifically, is something that is still unproven in a gambling environment, but uh, there is a lot of virtual currency that is in use in casinos. In fact, a lot of casinos try to get people to use virtual money and even convert it to tokens because... The question is about the anonymous cryptocurrency, so I can play anonymously. So for example, the market that actually does not accept the players, for example, for example US, and actually using the bitcoins can just accept the people that can pay for the bitcoins and playing. This is the question. Bitcoins are a form of currency that is a little bit gray. Um, so most countries treat it as a virtual currency. So you'd be able to use that, yes, bitcoins. At some point, uh, when there will be a lot of sites using bitcoins, probably it will become regulated like other currencies. Um, so it is a little bit of a gray area. Uh, because when you have regulated markets, you will uh, run into problems like anti-money laundering regulations, um, and then you have to report those kind of transactions. So uh, bitcoins are an interesting development. There aren't that many sites that use them, so it is rather unknown, um, the answer to your question, um, before many sites actually try it out. Um, we do feel that there is potential for the use of bitcoins as a, as a currency in, in gambling sites. So a question from, from me. I, I hate to say something very negative, but what about fraud? What percentage of transactions are fraudulent that you have to sort of back away from? Um, as with all industries, but I think the gambling industry experienced this um, to a larger extent than, for example, a typical e-commerce site. Um, you do have fraud, so you have to be very vigilant all the time. Um, it depends also on the country in which you're operating for. So certain countries do ha experience higher level of fraud, um, but typically you'll have 4% of the transactions being fraud. Um, so you have to be vigilant about it. You have to also do uh, know your client checks in which you ask players for identity verification documents um, and also to make sure that you handle chargebacks correctly, that you do not limit um, that you limit your risk basically all the time. So one thing that is very important, and even if uh, you're doing it on a social network, you still have to do that, even if there is um, a link to a real identity. Um, the link with a real identity on the social network will obviously help, because you will have um, less propensity for people with a real identity to commit fraud. However, um, it is still something that you need to manage on a day-to-day -day basis, and if effectively, for example, new players, you will limit the amount of money that they can bet once they build a history, a good credit rating basically with you, you will start <coughs> increasing the limits. Um, but of course, it's something that is ever present and will never go away. Do you have any more questions for Angelo? Okay, well, thank you very much, and please stay around for the next presentation. <laughs>